It's time now for Perspective, and today's guest is a man who played a leading role in making Israel a superpower when it comes to cyber power. Eviatar Mbatanya is the former head of Israeli cyber policy. He founded and led the Israel National Cyber Bureau under former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He also co-wrote a book tracing Israel's rise to becoming a cyber powerhouse. It's called Cybermania in English. Uh, a French translation that I have here comes out this week. We're excited to have him here today. Uh, Eviatar Batanya, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I want to start by clarifying some vocabulary. When you talk about cyber power, what do you mean exactly? Is it more than just cyber security? Yes, of course, and thank you and good morning. Uh, by cyber power, we mean uh, all the issues related to cyber. I mean not just cyber security, but uh, the cyber threat, cyber risk. Uh, is cyber is going to be a real new power like other conventional power that we know in the physical domain, so not just the cyber security, not what we called in the 90s information security. It's more defense and power than just information security. Okay, and the numbers you give for Israel are impressive. 40% of all cyber investments are invested in Israeli companies. One out of every three unicorn cyber companies is an Israeli company. How did Israel grow to be such a powerhouse in this domain? Uh, I think it was a combination of political decision of the prime minister and the government uh, to try and uh, take Israel into being a global power in cyber based on its quite, I think, relative advantage in both security and technology. And cyber is both te technology and security, so this was the decision. And combined with, I think, the right processes for a decade, it, take, it took a decade to build Israel to such number that you have just mentioned. And Israeli technology is impressive. It's also been incredibly controversial. Last November, actually, the U.S. blacklisted NSO group, which makes Pegasus spyware. Uh, the Biden administration said it's being used by foreign governments to target dissidents and rights activists. Uh, as many may remember, it's also been used to spy on world leaders. Is Israel concerned about the abuse of its technology? So most of uh, what we do in cyber is cybersecurity. Most of what we export our solutions and products uh, to defend uh, computer systems. Uh, here and there, you should see Pegasus as one of the systems around the world, like a radar. You know, in defense, we have uh, missiles and rockets, but we also have radars. So Pegasus is a sort of radar to identify terror acts, terrorists, and uh, crime organizations. And most of the time, it is used in the right place, in the right time, to identify terrorism and to, and to defend us and to prevent uh, terrorist acts. Sometimes it's used not in the right way, and here, yes, we care. And uh, we obey the Vassina Convention to exactly to what to do with it, and we search for better, I think, better vehicles around the world to prevent uh, misuse of such uh, vehicles as Pegasus. So what kind of things is Israel exploring to prevent that misuse? So we, since we, m most of the time what we do is uh, in order to export such, uh, v such tools, uh, you need in Israel uh, a license from the Ministry of Defense. So the Ministry of Defense uh, now made uh, a work in order to see how to better supervise to what and where and how it is used. I think it will be, uh, and together with other countries, I think we will find a solution. It's not just Pegasus, by the way. It is also other very similar software around the world. Pegasus simply is quite a good one, so it's on the table. Other are less, you know, less qualitative as uh, Pegasus. And we do have international norms when it comes to physical conflicts. When they're violated, we talk about war crimes. Do you think that there's such a thing as cyber war crimes and that we should be thinking about that? I think that uh, we should talk about that. And uh, the uh, international community is already talking about They're trying to understand uh, when and how cyber become like uh, in the physical domain, domain, how to build international law regarding cyber. I think it will take some years because we should better understand what cyber is and what cyber technologies are before we do that. And when we talk about regulating this technology, it does seem like it's a rather challenging thing to do. Is it the kind of case where the fact that this technology exists at all could perhaps be too dangerous if it's not possible to regulate? 
So cyber, I think the potential uh, to use cyber and to harm computer systems and society is there. It is not there yet, by the way. It will take a decade or two to be so risky. And yes, I believe, and Israel and, and other countries such as, uh, I think most of Western democracies think that we should have some uh, global norms and international law about it. There is a problem because there is a real conflict between what Russia and China want in this arena and what the United States and its allies want to achieve. And this conflict currently does not enable us to reach into a, a global uh, agreement or a global convention or something like this. What are the disagreements? What does each side want? The Russians and Chinese see the U.S. as a, uh, as a real cy cyber power in the world, and they try through cyber to bring democracy and open society everywhere, while they think that they should, be, should uh, um, perceive their sovereignty in cyber in their countries and not let the Internet and the cyber domain to be uh, accessible to everyone, to be open. This is, I think, the, the real basic problem. And this, uh, as soon as we succeed uh, uh, to solve this, we'll be able to also uh, get to some norms around how to use cyber and, and what not to do. I'm curious also about how you see the relationship between cyber warfare and physical, traditional warfare. Do you think it even makes sense at this point to separate those two? I think that with the years, cyber is going to live side by side with conventional warfare, meaning, and you can see it in Ukraine currently, uh, which every attack that the Russians are doing in Ukraine, you also see cyber attacks. Sometimes, by the way, it starts before. For example, 24 hours before the Russian uh, invasion into Ukraine, they started with, uh, we call it cyber artillery, meaning they started with cyber. Uh, to affect um, uh, control systems and, and other important systems of civilians and so on. And w which every attack, physical, in the physical domain attack, they also use uh, cyber means side by side. So we will see it more in war as cyber power being part of, con or, or, or cyber side to conventional power, part of military power, yes. It's such an interesting topic, and it's so interesting to hear your thoughts. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, but I do want to say once again, that was Eviatar Matanya, the former head of Israeli cyber policy. Uh, his new book, or his book, uh, Cybermania, came out in English last year. Uh, it's just been released uh, in France this week. Thank you very much. Thank you.